get started on your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious, flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factors two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals, all delivered right to your door. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they also help me stay on top of my goals. With offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track. This is definitely going to come in handy for my new year goals. Head to factormeals.com slash mc901pod50 and use code mc901pod50 to get 50% off. That's code mc901pod50 at factormeals.com slash mc901pod50 to get 50% off. Do you ever feel like life is a never-ending series of lessons while you try to find purpose, meaning, and answers? I am Vanessa Fontana, the host of Figuring Shit Out, a podcast where we undertake self-help, coming of age, and healing. As I live my 20s in New York City, figuring shit out myself, I've realized that if you spend your whole life trying to get your act together, you don't have a life. You have an act. On Figuring Shit Out, every Sunday, you get to normalize the journey of not knowing and be guided into living your life with more intention and ease. Do you have to throw on your favorite true crime podcast before bed in order to fall asleep? Same. And it's the very reason that I created Serial Napper. My name is Nikki Young, and I'm here to lull you to sleep or perhaps to give you nightmares with some of the craziest true crime stories that you've never heard of. Each episode of Serial Napper features a different true crime story told succinctly the way that it happened. Just the facts, ma'am. My focus is on unsolved crimes that need more attention, cold cases, and wrongful convictions. While true crime shows can sometimes be graphic in nature, I ensure that the story is told in a way that is respectful to the victims and their families. Now when it's time for bed, you can look forward to 30 minutes of well-researched and detailed case files while you get your beauty sleep. Find Serial Napper on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Sweet dreams. February 24th, 2020. 42-year-old George Torres Jr. was in his townhouse with his girlfriend, Sarah Boone. After having an unknown amount of alcohol to drink, the couple reportedly started playing games, one of which was hide-and-seek. At some point, the so-called game of hide-and-seek ended with George crammed inside of a suitcase, barely able to move and struggling to breathe. The next morning, he was found still inside the suitcase, dead. His girlfriend, Sarah Boone, was arrested for his death, charged with second-degree murder. She claims it was an accident, that it wasn't intentional. Police and prosecutors believe differently. On this episode... I'll be going in-depth regarding this case, trying to provide even more info about it than I have before. Welcome back to Music City 911. Although I've covered this incident before, the suspect in this case, 42-year-old Sarah Boone, is set to have her trial to start today. This is nearly four years after the death of George took place. There has been delay after delay in this trial, mostly due to Sarah's constant changing of attorneys. I think she's on her fourth or fifth one by now. I know I've covered this in a previous episode, but since the trial is supposed to start today, I say supposed to, there's always a chance it gets continued over, and it seems like she has this plan of, As long as I never go to trial, I'll never be convicted. So there may be a chance that it gets continued and goes to a different date. But as of right now, it's supposed to start today. But regardless, I wanted to go back over some of it as well as go even deeper with some portions of her police interview 
which I believe is very telling. To start this out, though, let's go back to the original bit of the evidence that will likely be used, the 911 call. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 4748 France Court, apartment 3. 4748, what's the street name? France, F-R-A-N-T-D. And the apartment number? 3. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. Okay, send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. Fire risk. What's the location, Mercy? Desk 32. No, please don't leave. 4748 France Lane, apartment 3. France Court. France Court. Yes. Okay, is this near Mackenzie Drive? I don't know where that is. Okay, fine, okay. It's Hillwood Park Apartments. Okay, 4748 France, correct? Correct. All right, correct. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in his case when we were playing. And okay. Like kind of hide and seek kind of thing, so... I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Right, okay, what's your apartment number? Three. Um, I don't know. Apartment three? Yes, like, he has, like, blood coming out of his mouth, and I don't know if, like, he had, like, an aneurysm or what, nothing. Right, okay, all right, okay. Listen, we're getting help out there, too. All right, okay. Okay, I... I now? Okay, four, yeah, man, listen, we're on our way out there, you're at 407716. Eight, six, eight, eight, four. eight four. Okay, is he hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried the, giving him CPR. Out of the, okay, so he's, uh, he was in a suitcase. Yes, and I fell asleep. Okay, how old is the how old 42. is the boyfriend, ma'am? Forty two year old male. All right. Okay, we're we're sending we're sending help out there. Sheriff's not standing way out there. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Listen to me. Okay. I, uh, I just need, I just need to confirm this. No, I, I understand. I just need to confirm this. Is he is he awake at all? Is he conscious at all? No. He's purple. Is he, right. Is he breathing? No. All right. I need you to get I need you to get him on the floor, flat on his back for I me. Did. Okay. I did. I did. I tried giving him CPR. All right. I tried giving him CPR. Yeah, okay, well, 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 all right, listen to me. I, listen, listen to me. I want you to lay him flat on his back for me on I the did. floor. I did. We're moving the pillows, okay? Yes, I did. All right, okay. We, He's stiff and purple. Right, okay. Listen, okay, man. That's fine. We're, we're still going to do co compressions on him, okay? All right. Place the heel of your hand on his breastbone, right in the center of the chest, right between the nipples. Yes. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Betty, I'm telling you. Just by okay. looking at him, you can tell. Okay. Ah! And? Please. Okay, he just gurgled. Okay, okay. L listen to me. All right. I want to play. I want you to place the heel of your hand. Uh -huh. Okay, right between, right between his chest, right between his breast bones. Yes. Put your other, put your other hand on top of that hand. Yes, we okay. want, we want to pump his chest to me hard and fast. Going to do this twice per second. I'm doing it again. Okay, no, no. Just keep on pumping. That's all you need to do for me. Keep on pumping his chest for me. That's, I don't need you to stop and talk okay. or anything. I just want okay. you to count out loud for me. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is this is nice. Okay, ma'am, just keep on pumping his chest. That's all you need to do for me, okay? Yes. Come on, please, hurry up. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, they're driving here as fast as they can. Okay, don't stop to say hurry up. Just keep on pumping and counting. I'm, I'm still doing it while I'm pumping you, okay? Okay. Still doing it. All right, just keep, just continue pumping. Just count on a second count with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Please hurry. Okay, man, they're getting there as fast as they can, okay? He's stiff and he's purple. Okay, keep I'm pumping his chest for me, ma'am. I'm still doing it, okay? Still doing it. Just don't make right. me count, okay? Right, okay, that's fine. Just, you need a good job. Just keep on doing it for me. That's All right, they're getting there as fast as they can, along with the sheriff's office also, okay? Please. Keep on pumping, ma'am. One, we two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep on pumping for me, ma'am. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it. Believe me, I'm doing it, okay? We are playing okay. hide and seek. Okay. All right, I understand. All right, just keep on pumping for me, okay? Okay. Please hurry. This right, okay. Horrible. This is horrific. What happened? Like, what happened? Okay, ma'am, just keep on pumping the chest for me, okay? They're, they're, in, they're, they're in the parking lot. They should be up there shortly, okay? I'm still doing it, okay? All right, okay, good. And you found him in a suitcase, you said? Yes. We were playing hide and seek last night. I fell asleep. I think they're here. All right, just keep on pumping the chest until they take over, okay? I am, I am. Okay. I am. Okay. the bat, there's something huge that jumps out at me. Her emotions. Or should I say her lack of emotions. In my nearly a quarter of a century as a 911 dispatcher, I've talked with a lot of people who have found a loved one dead. Most of the time, it's either expected or the person's elderly and it's a natural call, so it's not necessarily a huge surprise. Even when it's one of these, The people calling are saddened and have heightened emotions. If it's an unexpected death, like someone waking to find their baby that stopped breathing sometime during the night, or someone found their friend or partner died of a likely overdose, even something like that, there's still a lot of emotion. Sadness, disbelief, etc. I caught none of this from the call that we just listened to. When the dispatcher says, is this for police or medical? Sarah, very to the point, says, my boyfriend is dead. When they transfer to the fire and medical dispatcher, when he was trying to verify a piece of address by saying, is this near McKenzie Drive, Sarah seemed annoyed and said, I don't know where that is. When the dispatcher says, tell me exactly what happened, instead of saying again that my boyfriend's dead or something to that effect, she goes into a story of 
what led up to the death. That's an important thing. Language and behavioral experts would say that she's already trying to create a narrative, that she's trying to take any sort of blame away from herself. They go further with the dispatcher asking normal questions, asking if he's conscious or breathing, with Sarah saying no to each. Then when asked if he is cold and stiff, those are qualifying questions trying to determine if this is what we would call a workable arrest. If a person is both cold and stiff, the time that they could have been saved has passed. She initially says he is both cold and stiff, but then says he isn't necessarily cold. From that point, the dispatcher has to start CPR instructions. At the end of the call, we can hear paramedics enter and say too much time has passed. Sheriff's deputies also arrive on the scene after that and start asking about what happened. I'll play a portion of that just to give an idea of how the initial interaction with police goes. Yeah, you call it's working. Um, what's going on? Sorry, 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 I just got here, so fill me in. No problem. Wait, yeah, so he and I, we're putting a puzzle together. We've been doing some artwork right together. There. You are putting a puzzle together? Yes, we have a puzzle that we started in there. Okay. We've been doing art, turning stuff off the wall to, to make new art, and we're putting it together. New art put up there, like having a good time with one another. But we're drinking. We had a bottle of wine last night. Okay. Wow. So then it's like we decided to play hide and seek, right? Okay. So he gets in the suitcase. Okay. Who is this guy? That's my ex-husband, my former husband. How did he, he live here with you guys? No, I called him over here. Okay. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. So then he came over here. Here, let's talk in private, okay? I called you guys. <laughs> I tried giving you CPR. I, I, the problem is, is yeah. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning, when I found it. Before you called? Yes! It's one o'clock right now. I tried, I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 12.30ish, whatever. So I came downstairs and I was like, oh, he's in the suitcase still. And that's when I found him and I took him out and I tried doing CPR and then I called him and then I called you guys. Did he get here before the fire department got here? Who? Your husband? Or yes. your ex-husband? Yes. Okay. Where did he live at? Uh, right down the street. Okay. So you were playing and who zipped him up in I did! Okay. But then I fell asleep! Okay, okay. You're okay. I don't, I wasn't here. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. But I fell asleep! So I don't know if he suffocated or like had an aneurysm or a heart attack or what. What kind of medical conditions did he have? None that I know of. Nothing that you know of. None that I know of. None didn't take any No! No! All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, okay. just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's all that happened. Okay, okay. So I don't know if he had a heart attack or what in there. Like, I don't know what happened. So how long were you doing CPR on him prior to you calling 911? You tried that all morning? Yes. Okay. And then I called him while I was what doing CPR. What time did you start? Probably, you give me a rough ballpark. Here, let me fill this deputy in, okay? Please, may I have my Dr. Pepper? I am so cut now right now. To give a bit of background, just to try to catch everyone up and to give a bit of their past, George and Sarah started dating around the beginning of 2017. They moved in together after just three months. They had both been previously married. Their road was very rocky. It seems that drinking was one of their favorite things to do. Multiple times they got in physical fights where each of them got arrested and taken to jail. With each time that they were arrested, the other was there the next day to bail them out. But with all this, they stayed together. You'll hear later on in the interview with the detectives that Sarah says she loved George. And I say George, even though if you look at his name, you might think Jorge. Sarah called him George. But regardless of the pronunciation of his name, she says she loved him. Through the entire 911 call, and then, the whole time that she was talking with the initial officer that responded, she never shed a tear. She never looked sad. The most that she ever really looked like she was feeling anything was when she got to parts of her story that would be the peak of it. She explains that they were playing games, doing artwork, doing puzzles, then played hide and seek. I'm still not sure how you play hide and seek if you know where the other person is, but that was her story. At one point, she says, the problem is, I fell asleep. When she was telling the story before that, she was pretty normal. Then when she said the bit about falling asleep, 
she gets this half incredulous look on her face. Then she goes right back to her straight face when the officer asks, when did you do CPR? Her response was this morning when I found him. The officer says you called and then Sarah gets overly excited like, yes, of course. As soon as the officer says, but it's one o'clock right now, Sarah immediately starts blinking quickly and starts waving her hand all around nervously while she's looking away from the officer, almost like she's trying to think of what to say next. She still has the normal look to her face and her tone is the same, but when she gets to, he's in the suitcase still, both of her hands go to her cheeks and over her mouth like she's shocked. She continued by saying she called her ex-husband, then 911. And then again, as she has continued to be questioned, she goes right back to normal face and tone. The quick jumps from one attempted emotion to the next is pretty dynamic. It's really amazing how fast they go from one to another. She finishes by saying she wants Dr. Pepper because she is so cotton mouthed right now. That could be for a variety of reasons, but I would think that's likely from drinking the night before. Throughout talking to the officer, numerous times she asked for a drink over and over again, but she said they had a bottle of wine, just a bottle of wine. More on that later. The full body cam video was 41 minutes long. It's a lot to watch and I've included only a small portion here, but I've watched it all and the same Jack rabbit jumps from one emotion to the next last pretty much the whole thing. We'll fast forward now to when detectives have her in the interrogation room. In the interrogation room, there's a female and a male detective doing the questioning and they start with, they have just come back from the autopsy. So this morning we went to his autopsy, um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has, um, by the doctor. So I want her. Um, so he's got <coughs> scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. Okay. And um, it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? So, like, basically you're getting hit, and then, you know, you, you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. Like, some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm-hmm. that. It's called a, a contusion. So he had some injuries to his left shoulder. Um, he had... Um, he had a cut near his like lip. We could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I <coughs> also too. I he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall okay. or the hall tree. Okay. So I. Okay. I what, what about the scratches? Because <sighs> okay. there's also sex. Yes. Okay, because there's also like a like a scratch on like the back of his neck, like kind of like going, but it's like going straight across. I have no idea what that's from. <clears throat> and they're all recent. Like they 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 occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post or that occurred a week ago or two days ago, three days ago. They definitely occurred, you know, the night leading up to when he was. In all sickness. honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like. The only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No idea what it is. Nonetheless, I've had my son over the house, too. So I... Sarah is saying all these other injuries, she doesn't know where they came from. Aside from the scratches on his back, what she says happened during sex. The rest of them, she has no idea though they all happened likely that day, as the detective was saying. She continues by saying that nothing bad happened. There was no fighting. They were just having a normal day. Because like I said, the injuries are, they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday? Sunday leading into Monday. You called us yesterday at 1, so, but the incident you guys were painting and stuff the night prior. Correct. So we're talking about Sunday? And That's why I'm thoroughly confused because <coughs> we had a good time mm-hmm. sitting on the back porch having wine and smoking a couple of cigarettes and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play mm-hmm. and listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. This is what's 
mind blowing to me. Like I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. The detective then continues with asking about another injury that George had to which Sarah again denies having anything to do with. He also had, um, like on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising, um, and, um, on like his head and skull. I have no idea. As if something hit him. I consider have not force touched him. Trauma. I have not touched him. I have not touched him. Then how would you get those injuries? Tell me and we'll both know. I have not touched him. Fighting and such seems like it's a decently frequent thing between the two of them. Though Sarah paints it like there are sizable gaps between each one. Yeah, I don't even the know. last physical was probably, you said, I think, what, a month ago? Mm-hmm. Where you got the injury, right? What, you said that was a I'll month say ago? a few weeks, give or take, yeah. A few weeks? That was the last, like, physical altercation between the two of you? Um, yeah, you said a month ago he hit you with a curtain rod. Yeah, with a curtain rod. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. <laughs> huh. She is saying that he hit her with a curtain rod. Given their past with arrest, that probably is true as frequently as they fought saying that the last time either one of them had done anything to the other was a month ago it seems to me at least that that last piece of it might be a bit of a long time between their fights especially given that he had injuries consistent with being hit by something she continues by saying their volatile relationship had been good lately like we've been good i don't know if like it's since the last time he got out of jail like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes mm-hmm. and his, seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So... What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? The good probation you, officer? No, no. You said you guys have been good. What's your definition I've been good. good. I don't yeah. think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talk to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I sleep, I go over there. So. Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago. So Give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like, he gets belligerently drunk. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you all have looked through my phone yet and seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm-hmm. And the, at one point, I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures, bloody fingers, split foreheads, he split my nose. I've got this. Right. I don't know, Brian told you about it, where I had to have almost what? I had one really bad surgery, but then it got really, 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 really bad where I had to go, like, four or five more times afterwards for them to tend to it Mm -hmm. from him poking me in the back of the leg. Right. Sarah is doing what she's been doing in every aspect of this. The 911 call, the initial questioning by police, and now the interrogation by detectives. None of the blame for anything is on her. How could it be? In one part of her interview, she said she was a straight A student and excelled at everything. Maybe aside from having a violent relationship. I don't think you all understand who I am. Where? Okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. The other detective at this point, after hearing about all the assaults by George, a question that most people would be asking: Why are you with this guy? Then why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that when I tell you guys this. I really love him, like I do, and I feel like I can help him, like I feel like I could help him, which I did because he's come a really, he came a really long way from where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I've really helped him. I bailed him out of jail, what, three times. I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did for him. Gone to see all his public defenders, go to the state. I've gone to the state. I I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I have a I had hope in him. And he was trying. He was really trying. Just and then he starts to think about things and it just I think he gets overwhelmed and then it's like the next thing I know he's drinking. So it's like, oh man, 
I know where this is going to go, so I'm going to go upstairs and read a book. Or I'm going to go for a bike ride or I'm going to do something else. Or I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend, that's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. He doesn't know how to, I guess, maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously, prior than I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but have smoke coming out of his ears. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else because I don't want to drink. And every time, every time, his job broke his heart. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful and basically gave up on all of the employees. So I think that had a huge bearing on why he would drink so much. His ex-wife is bonkers. Mm -hmm. She was all over him all the time. Send me money, send me money, send me money. How can I send you money when I don't have a job? And he's still trying to take care of me and Lucas by paying a bill here or there, getting some groceries. So he always had something on his mind, which is why, again, I got the puzzles and the bank to try to get him off of it so we don't have a drink or he doesn't have a drink. So when you all see my phone, you can see all of the damage he has done to me and the videos of him smashing my television because he's belligerently drunk. Where most of the time, I just don't want to be there. And I try to help him. I try to calm him down. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he just passes out. She shifts pretty quickly from, I love him, and I was with him at all his court hearings and meetings and such with public defenders, to his ex-wife was horrible and always wanted money, then back to her original of how bad he was to her by doing things like smashing her TV. That clip I played was a little over three minutes long, and she went through all of those things I mentioned and more in that short length of time. The interview goes from there to Sarah talking about how George drinks all the time and how she is sober. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. This time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits. Look to HelloFresh's wholesome health-forward options like over 30 calorie-smart and protein-smart recipes each week. All the meals I've received from HelloFresh have been awesome. The Parmesan chive chicken and potatoes with mixed greens and honey Dijon dressing in my last kit was insanely good and super simple to make. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MC911 free and use code MC911 free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash MC911 free with code MC911 free. Do you ever feel like life is a never-ending series of lessons while you try to find purpose, meaning, and answers? I am Vanessa Fontana, the host of Figuring Shit Out, a podcast where we undertake self-help, coming of age, and healing. As I live my 20s in New York City, figuring shit out myself, I've realized that if you spend your whole life trying to get your act together, you don't have a life. You have an act. On Figuring Shit Out, every Sunday, you get to normalize the journey of not knowing and be guided into living your life with more intention and ease. Well, yesterday it made it sound like you guys were just drinking, like, a glass or two. Like, yeah, you obviously had the bottle, but you, I mean, you sense. told me on the, yeah, but you told me on recording, like, that you were not drunk, he was not drunk, you guys were having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I, number one, I do not want to get drunk. 
I don't like being non complimentous having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, you're you're making it sound like, like he's a raging alcoholic today, and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions, and you're like, a little defensive, like, no, we're not alcoholics. He, I'm not. We are not, you know. So, but you guys were both sober on Sunday, to your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out, I just fell asleep. So now it's kind of like, what is it? Is it? Were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. it got physical? No. Or is it? Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. He's dancing with my dog. You can see that too on the pictures, him loving the dog. He loves the dog and dancing around, having a good time and just, just being happy kind of thing. He doesn't know, I can't, I mean I can get like maybe two, three glasses of wine and I'll be fine, but I have to have my wits about myself because I don't know what to expect. The interview went from the last clip to their Sarah talking about how George drinks all the time and how she's sober. From there, the interrogation goes to how she was looking at getting a restraining order, but her stories, as always, jump all over the place. This next clip does all that and more. You'll see. And when you have, when you love somebody, you have limits. Everybody tells me that. All my neighbors don't tell me that. Mm -hmm. The office, property manager. <laughs> At some point, somebody gets enough, and then they have to, to do something to defend themselves. I would just flee, and I don't know if you um, would like to see on my phone, or I think it's I think it's actually on a laptop. I actually because, and you have to understand too, I have like prior to classes in PO, kicked him out how many times? I had him arrested how many times? But you also went down and bailed him. I out know. The next day. What's I know. What's on your laptop? Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, previously, mm -hmm. I actually looked up how to file a restraining order. Okay. Because I would take him out, his parents, because of them constantly having to take him back in, his bags of clothes, all his stuff. The one time, the last time, the father came out and irate and just not even, I, think, I don't even know if he knew Lucas was in the car just opened the back of my car and just started throwing all his crap in, just throwing it, like throwing it, like the car would jostle, he was throwing all his stuff. At that point, because I continually did it, not continually, I think I maybe did it three times, and he has nowhere else to go, they got fed up and said, nope, either you're staying there or you're staying here, but if you're staying here at their place, it's permanent. You're not going back over there anymore. So what happens is, he pursues me. So. I don't know if you all know where Katie Way Trail is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, it's literally right, right there from our apartment. Mm -hmm. Would ride his bike to work, but before he would leave extra early and come up to the wall, stand on top of his bike and poke his head over because he would know that I would be outside having my morning cigarette and cup of coffee. Where, and I would also know too what time he would get off of work, where I would know, come getting off of work, he's gonna do the same thing. So it's not like I ever got like a break from him where I told you all yesterday or whenever it was. I started to feel that it was too much togetherness. And when you have too much togetherness, friction happens. So I'm gonna go ride my bike. I'm gonna go upstairs and read a book. But what he, every, what does he say? Every waking moment he wants to be with me. So, and mind you, our townhome is either upstairs or downstairs. So it's like if you would like to sit downstairs and watch a movie or play on the laptop, look up some jobs, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to be upstairs maybe watching one of my shows or maybe reading a book. So, and then when that would happen, we really needed that. So what's for dinner? And then we would cook together and eat dinner and then crawl on the bed and watch a movie. Are you talking about this is like recent? I don't. You kind of like lost me. Like when? What are you? It was a while, like, like a little while ago. <clears throat> but now know. you're talking about now you're talking about tension building up and that you need space. So have That's you been feeling that way lately? Or no? Okay. No. <laughs> okay. My thing is too. So you all know. Oh, I, I hate that you. 
can't talk to her, but um, B, his ex-wife, when I say a monster, she's a monster. Like it does, she withholds her, their children from speaking to him. So he gets upset about that and then she like completely berates him about money, about the father that he is, what he did to her, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, mind you, this has not like been recent, but which is why he didn't even bother calling anymore because he knows that he's, she's going to answer and he's going to have to talk to her, so therefore he can't talk to his daughter. The other time he talked to her, made, made her talk to Cookie. That's on my cell phone too, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. What does she have to do though with anything about what happened Sunday and into Monday? Like, no, I'm just saying like previously okay. why the incidents, what happened is she plays a big part in it. Okay. On top of job yeah. and money and mm -hmm. groceries and all that. Okay. Sunday, I, <coughs> when I tell you this, I have no idea. I have no idea. A timeline, or at least an attempt at a timeline, was established in the next clip. Is there anybody else at the house? No, nope, it's just point? me and him. Um, since talking yesterday, do you remember any like time timelines better? Like what time uh, you guys were playing? What time you he was zipped up in the luggage? What time you I went told upstairs? You, we started because we had we cleaned the house a little bit, did some laundry. You started the activities around four, you said. Yes, around mm -hmm. four, four thirty ish, and then. You just said that it was dark when you were playing hide and seek, and I'm just curious yeah. if you remember. But when we were outside, that's where we would start mm -hmm. and talk about things, and then eventually I was the one that had him come inside, <laughs> so we could. About what stuff. time do you remember? What time that was is what she's asking. Mm. And you said you went up. You went up to bed around midnight. Midnight. -ish. Fell asleep around 12:30 ish. But those are the only times I have. So I have four and I have midnight. So there's a big gap. So I'm just curious, like, if you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower or... Like when we started to play, hide and seek. Yeah. Well, we went inside probably about, if I had to guess, we weren't, we weren't out there too long. Maybe about six-ish. Then you're talking about from hanging out outside and like, mm -hmm. okay. Well, we have two beach chairs that are out there. And right. Just enjoy the weather. Gotcha. Plus, it started to get dark and gnats and mosquitoes. Yeah. So, let's go inside. I don't want to be out here anymore. Okay. All right, let's go. So, we're doing whatever. We did it for a while because that puzzle, I don't know if they took it or they saw it. Um, worked on the puzzle again, finished it, started to paint. Well, started listening to music for a little bit started to paint. Uh, can we turn the music off? No problem. Start at the top, paint, whatever. Maybe, gosh, that puzzle, we worked on that for probably a good hour and a half. So eight o'clock-ish? Is when you went to hide upstairs originally? No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well, I, we can't, I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, ugh, come on. Okay, you want to play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag, you're it. Well, so it's like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And then you went upstairs, and then he didn't come up, and you came down, and the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations, and so it was already okay. there. Sarah is then asked if they have played hide and seek before and if she had ever zipped him up in a suitcase before this one. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. So That's it was just kind of like that prop was there and it was there yes. and it was in play because. Why do you say it like that though? I would never do that. You would never zip him up in a suitcase? Uh, well, I mean, we were playing. No, I know. That but time, I but. I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm talking about hide and seek, which is a game, so. The suitcase originally is in our closet, buried all the way to the back. If you, I don't, I know the CSI people saw our closet. Our closet needs to be cleaned out really bad. My son's clothes need to be cleaned out really bad because they don't fit him anymore and I'm tired of looking at him. So he took it upon himself, including that suitcase, 
to take it downstairs so we can get all of our clothes, our donations and everything, and just leave the whole thing by the clothing and shoe thing at my son's school. No, we're just, ask, I'm just asking out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not, but obviously no. I understand, you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter, you were laughing, yes. he was laughing, but what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is it something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Um, we were actually this last game running out of places to hide because we have a townhome where it's upstairs or downstairs. So the next bit is where it starts getting real good. Very telling of her, what type of a person she is and how truthful she might be. Um, okay. So do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover? Anything, any t photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I think I took a picture of a dog. Okay. But your phone is password protected. You have the password. He has the facial recognition. So it's not like someone else could be on your phone. No, I have both. But you have the face and the password. Yeah. Yeah, but he only has the face, correct? No. To be able to get onto your phone, you told me that he looks at the phone. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought you were asking if I did. Yes, it's me. Okay. Does he have access to your phone? Because you said it's yeah. your phone. Okay. How does he have access? Sarah, can I buy your phone? Yeah, it's right there on the kitchen counter. Okay, but how does he get it to it? Because it's password protected. He'll, he'll come and get it to me, and I'll just do the face thing. Where sometimes, too, like, he's, <coughs> look, he'll joke with me and say, okay, I need to borrow your phone. And he'll hold it while I'm cooking or doing something do the facial recognition. Okay, so he doesn't know the password and he doesn't have the facial recognition. No, he is the only other person that would use your phone, I'm yes. assuming other Well, than. Lucas. Right. But Lucas wasn't there Sunday. I, right. Um, so, to your recollection, no videos on Sunday? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, I like, I get my phone, I, maybe it took a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs and George and have them dancing, but I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Mm -hmm. So with this, and this bit is also very important, only Sarah and George have access to her phone. No one else could have taken any photos or videos. All she says she remembers doing in that regard is maybe taking a picture or two with the dog and maybe someone else. But detectives had already looked at her phone. They knew what was on it. Okay, um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Yeah. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. That was a big faux pas there by the detectives walking in there trying to play a video on a laptop that was nearly dead. Luckily, I have the audio from that video that Sarah took. I'll play it now so you can better hear what was on it and also to see how her reaction is in the next little bit. Sarah. Yeah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't fucking breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. 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 <laughs> Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe. <laughs> it's on you. Sarah. Reel around some. 
Might want to get video for it extra. Because <laughs> I got this. Carol. Real or us? Carol. Sarah, I can't, I can't breathe, babe. Oh, that's what Sarah. I feel like when you chewing on me. Sarah, I Fuck can't you. fucking breathe, Sarah. Yeah. You should probably shut the fuck up. Sarah. The disturbing video showed George still alive inside the suitcase squirming around, begging for Sarah to let him out. He was saying he can't breathe. Sarah, instead of letting him out, was laughing at him, saying fuck you, and saying that if he can't breathe, he should probably shut the fuck up. She ends it with, shh. The next clip is them actually playing it for her. You can hear how she was saying in a previous clip, she only took pictures of the dog, obviously a lie, moving to her exactly knowing what was on her phone and she not wanting to watch it. Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm-mm. I don't know how much I can take. I don't know how to find her. Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> Well, it's on your phone, and you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> for everything you've done to me. Oh. Fuck you. Oh. And Fuck just, you. That's you. Oh. Your voice. Last time we talked to you, you had said that you put him in the suitcase, he had two fingers hanging out. And I flipped him over. I flipped him over, and that's where it was. And there's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions and him saying that he can't breathe and you saying, fuck So you. this is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal, yes. like as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now he's obviously still in there. So he didn't, how did that, how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional of. She was downstairs in their townhouse. She went up the stairs to go to sleep. But she says she didn't intentionally go upstairs. I wonder how that's possible. It continues. He's begging to let for you to let him out. You sound... You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What does fuck you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my Oh, like she does. Like, I get called <laughs> everything but a white woman, so. Okay. I, my intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that. My intention was not to leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at why no I told point you. when I see his fingers. And He'll be up here any like, minute. And then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling you. And I he didn't can't wake breathe. up. 
do you think he's, he's joking? He, you told me he was laughing, and I we were before. The video, there's, there's no. We laughing. first got in there. Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like this video is at 11:12 when it starts. So was he in there for like a long time prior to no. recording this? No. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny. But I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was like panicky. Like I didn't. I so pushing up on a suitcase saying Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I can't. I breathe. can't breathe. <laughs> George has done that in the past before too, where it's just like he thinks that he's woe is me kind of thing, where it's like I don't. Well, he's think never been locked in a suitcase, but no. he couldn't get out. So it's kind of. I thought it was the boy the crying wolf, something. crying wolf kind of thing. Okay. And again, my plan. But, that, but nowhere in there is he laughing. Is he joking? He is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Please don't, I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but, <laughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me. Like, no, I'm just trying to show you a video that you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Sarah was going back to, it's not her. The detectives are trying to paint her as doing something. No, Sarah, they're showing you a video of what you did, and you don't like it because it's not your fault. That's what Sarah is trying to push over on everyone. The last clip from the interview I have is her talking about the drinking again and the detectives asking further about it. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. Just because I went upstairs and... Just you because you're drunk doesn't you mean that you... Times that you were not drunk. You said that you had your wits about you. You said he had his wits about you. Mm -hmm. You said that you don't like not having your wits. In my experience, if somebody cannot remember doing something to the extent of making two videos and, a video and taking a photo, they are intoxicated. Okay. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I just get trying it. to make sense of it. We're trying to figure it. out what we're trying you're to figure out this video. You explain it to us. We're listening. I <laughs> just did. Like, we were playing, and then, like, I thought it was... <laughs> My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to... He'll be up here any minute. But, but you again. willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get My plan wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs. And then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think he's asking to come out? He I didn't do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> well, I thought by not giving it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in. The biggest thing I took from this is that Sarah was always trying to paint herself as the best person. She doesn't do anything wrong. George drinks and gets drunk. Sarah doesn't. Even to the point of her saying she can't get drunk, she has to keep her wits about her. But it has to be one or the other. To make this happen, either she was sober, and after only having a couple of drinks, she did this intentionally, or she was drunk and made some sort of a mistake. The whole splitting of a bottle of wine, like she said they did, Sounds a lot like someone that's been pulled over for a DUI and asked how much they had to drink, and the standard answer is almost always two drinks. I think we can tell from the way that she sounded on the cell phone video that she was pretty blitz drunk by slurring her words together like she was. But even with that, I think there was a bit of both in there. I think that she was very drunk. Absolutely. And I believe that she was trying to cause him at least some harm. She doesn't at all seem like she's a good or truthful person. Yes, she's likely been through a lot with George in the past with all the assaults, but with evidence that there was also assaults on him just that day, along with a video of him in the suitcase with her laughing at him as he was slowly dying, it really does not paint her as being the best type of person. I think this trial is going to be very much worth watching and keeping track of. I'm hoping that she's taken off the streets for a long time. 
that'll do it for this rather long episode of Music City 911. With any hopes, you'll be listening to this just before you tune into the trial today. Until next time. Well, yet another curveball. I had already recorded this and had it scheduled to be released today on the 29th. And just after I had it recorded, Sarah magically got the trial delayed yet again. It's really incredible. As I said before, I think she's on her fourth or fifth attorney. This is just getting to be too much. State of Florida versus Sarah Boone, 2020 CF 2603. Okay. All right. We'll set this matter for a special pretrial on May the 3rd at 9 a.m. Um, Ms. Boone can, uh, we'll have a mandatory appearance for Ms. Boone uh, at the May 3rd at 9 a.m. pretrial. What's the following trial period for the, the trial period for May the 3rd would be May 13th. All uh, right, with a trial period of May the 13th. So I guess, again, we will be waiting. Not only, Sarah, did you mess up your own life by killing a man, you just messed up my episode. Jeez. Anyway, again, until next time, for Music City 901, I'm Brandon, and y'all have a good one.